discontinued super slash sports cars fun to drive on a daily that's what i got here today a 2019 bmw i8 roaster the unique thing about this gray metallic is this is the first year that the roaster came out plus you get the bigger battery pack opposed to later generations of this it's sad to say that they're discontinued will this be just as good is the future to come of the 2024 that's supposed to get nearly 600 horsepower and I-4 turbo with better fuel economy, maybe even a lower side sill to get inside the vehicle. Room for two because this is the roaster. If you opt for the coupe, it would be a four seat. Why option a 2020 when the 2019 has every package? We have the Terra World package, which gives the exterior elements with the blue, with the gloss black, inside with exclusive e-copper leather with ceramic control. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. BMW i8 started off its heritage with the first of its kind BMW laser lights. The flat hood, air curtains in the front aprons, air ducts between the tail lamps and on the sides of the roof frame. The air gets pushed around the wheels on top of the car and pushed through the best looking LED tail lamps of its time, making the co effect. 0.26, which is crazy. A 50-50 weight distribution, a low center of gravity because of the deep and central location of the battery pack. Carbon fiber and aluminum makes up the exterior to keep the curb weight under 3,500 pounds. The build has aluminum that was mostly sourced by recycled materials. I like the blue that's around the BMW badging in the iconic kidney grille because everything of this is sculpted. A front track at 64 4.7 inches. This model was not big on paper for performance. It was designed for the future, for the carbon fiber, the recycled materials, and the drivetrain to give us this design. But you can see how aggressive the front fascia really is. 20 inch wheels, we have multi spoke that are jet black. Standard is a 19 inch wheel. The brake calipers are blacked out because of that Terra World package with that ceramic control. With adaptive suspension, the front is a double wishbone. The rear is a multi-link, both with coil springs and an anti-roll bar. The roaster badge right on the side, a length at 185 inches with the wheelbase just a hair over 110 inches. And the roaster definitely captures all the unique styling. A wide rear track at 67.8 inches. There's no vehicle like it. It's truly unique. You don't see a lot of them on the road. Going inside to your cargo, 5.4 cubic feet. You do have a little storage divider but for the most part, you're not going to have a lot of storage here. Behind the back seats, you will have some additional storage, which adds up to nearly 10 cubic feet. So it is pretty efficient for a daily use vehicle. The BMW i8 Roaster definitely sets a good example of what BMW is capable and where the future is at. And they back the performance with a 1.5 liter inline three turbo, producing 369 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque that's paired to a six-speed automatic transmission, adding an 11.6 kilowatt battery pack with two electric motors, achieving 69 MPGEs. That's good for a zero to 60 in the roaster at 4.4 seconds. With the coupe, around 4.2 seconds. Quarter mile, 11.2, with the top speed at 155 miles per hour. Charging time is around 3.1 hours on a 240 or a level two. Home plug or a 120 volt is gonna be over four hours but you're getting nearly 70 MPGEs. Yes, this is not track driven. It's sad that we're losing it, but now is your chance to get it in a price tag that is nearly half of what this thing was brand new. Let me know in the comments what you think about this 2019 BMW i8 Roaster as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the BMW i8, you just kind of slide in. 
Push this, you get a little weird sound when the door closes. Headroom at 37.1 inches, legroom at 38.3 inches, six foot three, I could fit inside with the top up. That's excellent. This is an exclusive e-copper leather. You get eight-way power adjustment for the driver and passengers, three-way memory seats, the ambient lighting that goes into the door panel, and on the driver's side for the dashboard. 8.8 inch touchscreen navigation. This is an iDrive 6. So we have the pinch and we have the swipe. Click into the home button so you can see everything we add. Slide it over. This does not have Android Auto. It does have Apple CarPlay. So you are taking care with that. Sirius XM, streaming Bluetooth audio, AM, FM, switch it to reverse and you got your reverse camera. Now what I dislike off the bat is how they add a lot of harder materials on the dash. They just add a touch of carbon fiber. I wish it was all over because on the air vent on the passenger side, you just get the silver, which it does match all of the air vents. However, it would be nice to have maybe a little piece of carbon fiber and some ambient lighting. You still get your buttons that you could just slide over to assign for your radio station, dual climate control settings, their heated seats. I do like the blue outlining for your push start, your E-Drive comfort, and your Eco Pro. You have an area for your key fob, which is a very unique key fob. This is not like any other BMW. It does set itself apart. You have your iDrive with that carbon fiber in and then open up in here and this is where you put that roaster top down so you can really enjoy that sunny Florida. Cup holders, you get one here, a 20 ounce will fit, and you get one right here in the back, which is kind of weird because it almost makes me feel like they forgot to put a second cup holder. It's gonna be very sporty for your elbows. Open up inside a 12 volt and a little bit of storage. The steering wheel is a three spoke, very futuristic with the silver outlining it, the BMW with the blue around it, multi-function paddle shifters. The gauge cluster, the same thing. You can change the arrangement of the digital cluster so you can make it a little bit more sport derived. Now I like how they separate the gas and your battery so you could tell the difference. One thing I dislike, it's not power telescoping. Like, you know, there's just a, few things that I think they maybe forgot to do. That's really where it's at. The door panel is super cool, just not as forgiving. The carbon fiber goes around where you open it. One touch up and down for your windows. They're not dual pane, there's no storage. For a roaster, it definitely sets a good example. With the top down, you're gonna have a lot more breathing room. These eight pillars do pretty much almost hit you in the face though, because where you're sitting, it's a big eyesore. They should have made these a little bit smaller. That way it just would have been a little bit more sporty. Heads up display, I can't see it with my polarized glasses. Taking the BMW i8 out for our test run, 369 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque. With the roaster, 4.4 seconds, zero to 60. With the coupe, it's about 4.2 seconds. Quarter mile at 11.2 seconds, which is insane. The power increase is definitely something that is appreciated. Unfortunately, the discontinuing, that's something that I dislike because this is such a unique vehicle, like I was saying on the exterior of all what you get. It's just a great bang for your buck. Not necessarily a supercar, but it feels and looks that way. So when you drive this, you already feel like you're super low to the ground and a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. I mean, you can't beat that at all. Visibility is gonna be a little bit tough because the A-pillars are huge. So you do have some blind spot in the front and on the back, but I would just put the top down. That's gonna take care of all of the blind spot in the back, and then it's easier for you to reverse or do whatever you need. Charging that battery about 3.1 hours on a 240 volt, that's pretty good too, because I mean, you're getting over 60 MPGEs. Nice and quiet. Give her a little go. Oh, it feels nice and wide in the road. I do like that because it has a great presence. In this type of car, anywhere you drive, you're going to get some thumbs up because of the type of vehicle it is. Now, it's not going to be the fastest BMW, but the engineering behind it is something that is truly special and unique. The ride, it's going to be a little bit more unforgiving at lower speeds. Higher speeds, it's going to soak it up a little bit better, but I mean, you're so low to the ground, you got upgraded wheels, it's gonna stop right here and give her some go. <laughs> she is fun, boy, she's fun. 
Now with any vehicle, there's obviously some pluses and minuses, and I would say the biggest minus in this or negative is the fact that you do get a significant amount of road noise in the interior and the fact that it's not necessarily the fastest BMW on the road. So whenever you are looking to purchase one of these, this is something that's more or less like a collector, and it's a gym. You got your heads up display, you're not gonna be able to see it too well with polarized glasses, but you still have everything that you need. I drive six, so it's not the latest technology. Now, some of the noise that you're hearing, I had to put a lot of my gear inside on the passenger footwell because it doesn't fit in the cargo and this is going to lead me to the three things I like and three things that I dislike is anything more than that I'd be buying this vehicle the three things that I like is you still have that wow feeling even years later and everywhere you go because it's not a very common vehicle people are going to say wow that is awesome the way the doors open and you got the roaster the second thing that I like about the vehicle six foot three I can actually fit with the top up which is unheard of considering there's a negative to it and I'll get to that in a second. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is that you get great gas consumption. It's very comfortable even though you do feel the bumps but on a daily use I could say you would be able to use this. It's not going to be as soft as the NSX and the GTR is obviously going to kill all of them and it's the only one that's still going to be in production. However, the fact that you get such a blend and it's still comfortable it's still wide enough in the interior because on the exterior it is wide you still have substantial amount of space you're going to lose some seats in the back because we got the roaster but i would definitely recommend this one over that just because there's really no need unless you want extra cargo three things that i dislike has to start off with coming inside the vehicle it is super hard you have to put your butt if you're tall like me on the door well area and just kind of drift in so you'll get used to it it's just you know it's not as easy to get in for tall people turn radius at more or less a stop point about two lanes let's rock and roll super smooth i like it the second thing that I dislike about the vehicle is there's really not enough storage compartments at all, even in the cargo, cup holders. It's not very user friendly in the sense for every day, even though this could be an everyday vehicle. Just a few touch ups would have made it a little bit more pleasing. The last thing that I dislike about the vehicle, obviously the cargo, like I said, we're going to add it to the third because there's no frunk. and. There's a lot of harder materials in the inside. Yes, we're getting some carbon fiber inlays. It's just, they still left a lot of basic trim pieces, which makes this vehicle not as exciting as it is on the exterior. Top down, gonna put these windows up and give her a little go. And this is the beauty about this vehicle. With the top down, it's definitely more pleasing you get all that vitamin D. The way the windscreen's structured, I still fit underneath it even though I can almost look over it. But the wind doesn't really hit me too much. And you have plenty of adjustments in the seats. Comfortable, I mean, I like the fact that even though it's not super fast, you can still push the gas and it still hauls. The touch screen is a little bit further, so it is a little bit more difficult to touch. You will probably be using the iDrive 6 more so to, really do your navigation but everything is view viewable and i mean it's an i8 so it's a no-brainer is it something that i'm gonna miss truly it is because this is an exceptional vehicle it was just i kind of feel built at the wrong time because if they would have waited maybe a few years this thing hands down would have been the best vehicle nowadays to purchase and unfortunately they discontinued it a little bit too young but power wise you have it you do hear that electric motors, you hear them, but it's not unpleasant. Dynamics, it does feel wide, but you're in charge. That's what this type of vehicle is. I mean, this is like a supercar slash play slash sports all in one. Why wouldn't you wanna get a hybrid with 
this much power, this much torque, it's not gonna be a track-driven car. Even in video games, they love this particular vehicle. They call it the Beam Hybrid in Roblox. And I like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2019 BMW i8 for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click the next video, the subscribe button, check out the details, merchandise, website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.